Okay, third differential equation. <clears throat> this one's a little different. This one gives us a context. Um, the next two are actually going to give us a context as opposed to the first two that were just sheer equations. Um, if you remember from my first video, I showed you last year's differential equation and it had a context. It was about a potato. Um, so let's look at this one with a context. The rate at which a baby bird gains weight is proportional to the difference between its adult weight and its current weight. At time equals zero, when the bird is first weighed, its weight is 20 grams. So what are we talking about right there? We're talking about an initial condition, probably going to come into play somewhere. Let's find out. If B of T, capital B of T, is the weight of the bird in, gram, in grams at time T days after it is first weighed, then we've got this differential equation here. Now, notice, let's just talk a minute about the setup of this equation. Uh, they explained it in words. They said that the, the rate at which the baby bird gains weight, so dB over dt, is proportional. So one-fifth must be our, our proportionality constant there. Um, between its adult weight, 100 grams apparently, uh, minus its current weight. Okay, so I just wanted to explain where that equation came from because that, that may help you uh, with the problem. I've seen problems um, on the multiple choice section where they, they give you a, an explanation like that in words and then they ask you to match it to its differential equation. So that, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so uh, they even come out and mention the initial condition B of zero equals 20. Let's look at part A. Is the bird gaining weight faster when it weighs 40 grams or when it weighs 70 grams? Well, they gave us an equation that talks about the rate, so it's asking about a rate. Faster is a rate, so the question is, is dB over, t, dB over dt greater at 40 or at 70? So it's just a matter of plugging it in. Okay, so dB over dt is equal to 1 fifth times 100 minus 40. So that's 1 fifth times 60, which is 12, right? Um, and then dB over dt is equal to 1 fifth times 100 minus 70. So that's 1 fifth times 30, which is 6. So, obviously that rate is faster. Um, let's just say it in words. Uh, the, um, well, I mean, not the, let's say since. Since dB over dt is greater, when b equals 40, the baby bird, oops, let's spell baby, right? Baby bird is gaining weight faster. when it weighs 40 grams. And you know, it, this is the great thing about calculus, okay? Calculus is, is the mathematics of applications, and clearly we're looking at an application here. So when you get an answer like this, pause for a second and see if it makes sense. I mean, think about a baby growing, okay? Um, I know it's kind of hard to compare a human baby with a baby bird, but but just think about it. When you're a little bitty baby, you grow a lot more rapidly than the older you get as a child. You know, by the time you get to high school, you're pretty much done growing. Uh, most people are. So it kind of makes sense that when he's smaller, the rate at which he is is growing or gaining weight in this case, uh, it makes sense that that is, is more rapid than when he gets a, a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger. Um, all right. No, I mean, you can't really use that explanation. <laughs> you need to have the mathematics. But I'm saying just to confirm that your mathematics uh, makes sense. Just, just think about it for a second. Make sure the context makes sense. Okay. 
Uh, let's look at part B. It says find d squared b over dt squared in terms of b. So we need to find the second derivative. Uh, so let's just use their notation right here. Uh, we're taking the derivative of this right here. Uh, we've, we've got a constant in front, so leave the constant. Um, so... Um, the derivative of, of what's on the inside there. The derivative of 100 is 0. Uh, the derivative of b would be db over dt. And there was a minus in front of that. Okay, so this equals negative 1 fifth db over dt. Okay, so I was, I was trying to glance at the rubric as I was doing that. Um, so uh, you get... Um, Oh, but it says in terms of B. So we didn't really finish that. Uh, that's in terms of DB over DT. So we've got a substitute. Negative 1 fifth times 1 fifth times 100 minus B. Um, that's just DB over DT. That was defined at the very beginning. So this is equal to negative 1 over 25 times 100 minus B. So we get one point for... Finding that second derivative in terms of b, you gotta you gotta do it completely, okay? You can't stop here. You gotta find it solely in terms of b, not in terms of db over dt. Okay, the second part of the question says use that to explain why the graph of b cannot resemble the following graph. Um, so we're we're looking at an equation for the second derivative. Okay, we're looking at an equation for the second derivative. The second derivative tells us about concavity. Um, so, how about we figure, I mean, if you, if you look at the graph, they're saying that it can't resemble. Let's look at the concavity of that graph. The first part of it is concave up. The second part of it is concave down. So, how about we figure out if there is actually truly a change in concavity according to our equation. Um, so, um, the, the bird at most weighs 100 pounds. He starts, or not 100 pounds, 100 grams. That's a big bird. Um, 100 grams. Uh, he starts at 20 grams, and the most he weighs is 100 grams. So this value um, has always got to be positive, right? Because B is always going to be less than 100. So this part is always positive. So we're taking a positive number, and we're multiplying it by this negative 1 over 25. So um, therefore... Well, I, I, I would rather explain this. I would rather say, um, um, uh, t -t 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 d squared b over dt squared is always negative. For 20 is less than or equal to B, which is less than 100. Therefore, uh, the graph of B must always be concave down. Or, well, not always, but must be uh, concave down on that interval. And it's not. Okay, it's not. Um, we need probably should mention the given graph is concave up. On part of the interval. Okay, so that, that's a question that can seem a little intimidating, but go back to the basics of what the say. I mean, if, if they asked you to find the second derivative and then they ask you a question like this, it probably means you're going to use the second derivative to justify the question that they're asking. Um, 
I mean, they even say use the second derivative to explain why the graph of B cannot resemble uh, that graph. So um, just go back to what the second derivative tells you. The second derivative tells you about concavity. Um, so we need to determine, you know, what would be the concavity of the original graph? Is, is there a change? Is it always positive? Is it always negative? You know, what, what's going on there? Um, so you get one point for the second derivative. You get one point uh, for your explanation here. All right, last part, use separation of variables. They even tell you to use second separation of variables. That, that's kind of unusual, but every once in a while they'll throw you a bone like that. <clears throat> uh, to find y equals b of t, the particular solution to the differential equation with initial condition b of 0 equals 20. I mean, they even tell you the initial condition. So the fact that some people forget or don't even think about using the initial condition just means they're not paying attention to the question. And I'm not trying to, to criticize you guys or, or make you feel bad, but I want you to remember that. The way they phrase these questions a lot of times is designed to help you out. Okay, um, don't use, use what they give you. Okay, use what they give you. Okay, so um, this one, as far as separation of variables, it, it's really not that complicated because we really only have one variable over here, but its derivative notation is on the other side. So we've got to divide by that to move that over. Most of the times, the guys, these differential equations will involve an exponential or a logarithm, one or the two, okay, one or the other, um, most likely, okay, so keep that in mind. So if we move that over by division, move the dt over, um, so the antiderivative of this was of course, it would of course be the natural log of the absolute value of 100 minus b, it was minus, so we need to put a minus in front, the antiderivative of one-fifth with respect to t is one-fifth t. Don't forget your plus c. So let's go over the point so far. One point for the separation of variables. Uh, this time they only give you one point for the antiderivative, so you got to get them all right um, to get that point. Uh, one point for your constant of integration, your c. After you find the c, you got to use that initial condition. So let's see here. b is... Um, 20, b is 20, t is 0, so um, 100 minus 20 is 80, so the negative natural log of 80 is equal to c, because 1 fifth times 0 is 0. So let's go back up here and plug that in. Okay, variable we're solving for stuck inside the logarithm. Sorry, I forgot the point for using the initial condition. Stuck inside the logarithm, so we got to, uh, first of all, we got to move that negative. You notice there's a lot of time there's a negative involved. So that's the natural log of 80 minus 1 fifth t. Now we write an exponential form. So our natural log is out of the picture. Our variable is almost free here. Um, I'm going to write this step just to continue to get you used to what's actually going on. But when you do it on the exam, you really don't have to write that step right here um, because this is always going to happen when you got the E and the natural log, they're going to cancel. And it's multiplication. Um, again, I'm just going to move the B and then move that. So B is equal to 100 minus 80E to the negative 1 fifth K, or excuse me, 1 fifth T. Um, notice I don't, um, I'm not showing every algebraic step. If you want to, you can. If that helps you, do it. Um, but I, I'm just saving time, I'm saving space, I'm saving effort, okay? Uh, don't forget, go back and check that initial condition. Make sure that it works out. Uh, 100 minus 80e to the negative 1 fifth times 0. So that's 0. So e to the 0 is 1. So we've got 100 minus 80, which is 20. Okay, just go over to the side, take a quick second, check it, make sure you don't have any sign errors or anything like that.
And that's it. One point there for that final step of solving for B.